Hey everybody, Eric with Solabox. Today I'm out in the shop working on uh, building some frames. Asher's out here, he's building an airplane out of scrap aluminum. How's that coming along, Asher? Hi. <laughs> Hi. So anyway, yesterday, I had a guy come up uh, to the shop with a Zongshan RX3, little Chinese 250cc, six speed, um, little adventure bike. Well, those bikes were first uh, brought into the country, actually before they were brought into the country, I was really paying attention to the story and was really interested to see how things would go with that. Um, was it uh, California Scooter Company, I guess, brought them into uh, United States, went through all of the uh, EPA stuff, I think, and uh, got them certified so that they could be sold here. And I was really interested to see how that would go. I've always, for me, I've always been interested in what you can do with a smaller displacement bike. Uh, I think a lot of manufacturers just don't really get it. Um, they, they follow the bigger is better mentality. I, you know, I just, I don't want a gigantic 1200 cc adventure bike. It's just not what I'm interested in. Um, I think uh, maybe my first thought on the 250 was that it might be a bit small, that uh, maybe I'd want a little more. And now having ridden one, uh, yeah, I, I think I'd want a bit more from a motorcycle, but maybe not a whole lot more. Um, so anyway. Uh, that's Asher's what? Oh, that's Asher's helmet. Yeah, good job, son. So anyway, uh, God brought this bike up yesterday, and I got to look at it firsthand. I was a little bit concerned about, you know, what would the fit and finish look like? Um, you know, would it look like it was made in China? Would it be plasticky? You know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, when, when Honda introduced the Cub to America, it really changed motorcycling. And a lot of people thought, oh, you know, it was going to be junk. Well, look what happened. Same thing with uh, Japanese cars. You know, look what, where we're at now. I think we're going to see the same thing with Chinese motorcycles. You know, I think that they're going to be a major player in the, uh, in the marketplace. And uh, like it or not, that's, I just think it's going to be the way that it's going to go. And so... Taking a look at that bike yesterday, I was really surprised, honestly, at what I saw. You know, uh, you know, some things like the chain ring and stuff I thought would be really bad really didn't look much different than a Japanese motorcycle, quite honestly. And uh, having ridden it, you know, I was pretty impressed with, uh, you know, especially for the money. I mean, that bike comes in at, what, like $3,800, I think, to your door? And I think when it was first released, it was actually less than that. I just feel like that's a lot of motorcycle for the money. If you look at uh, a KLR, full retail on a new KLR is almost double that. And so, yeah, I guess not quite double that, but pretty close. Um, I just feel like it's a lot of motorcycle for the money. And so, uh, what were my first impressions? You know, I thought uh, in terms of how it was put together, it looked really, really solid. Uh, in terms of riding it, uh, I guess the first thing I'd probably want to talk about would be the brakes. Was not impressed with the brakes really at all. Um, it would definitely slow the bike down. You'd get it to come to a stop, but they didn't feel really great to me. Um, I know that some people are uh, kind of improving that um, with better pads. I think uh, this one had centered pad, pads on the front, which he, the owner actually said was much better than stock. The rear, he, he left the regular ones on it because the, the rear wheel has a tendency, I guess, to, to lock up, doesn't have a lot of feel. So I would say, if anything, um, the brakes weren't great. It wouldn't stop me from buying the bike. Uh, the power delivery, you know, I didn't get it out of fourth gear, honestly. Um, it's a six-speed bike, which I, I can see it really needing to be a six-speed bike to really get things done. Um, it was kind of underwhelming. It would certainly do it. Um, I wouldn't have any problem with that. I would want a little bit more. I think if you took that same bike and made it into like a 450, I think you would really have something awesome on your hands. Um, I think personally, I would want a little bit more. I was really, I'm more of a KLR guy. It's basically what I am at heart. And so I kind of wanted to see if it'd be a KLR killer. You know, could I, could I ride that bike instead of a KLR and be happy? Um, 
I think maybe for touring, you know, I didn't get to get it out on the freeway, which is kind of a shame. I would have liked to have done that. Um, although I did in fourth gear take it up to uh, like 8,000 RPM to see if it would be getting buzzy. It red lines around nine. At eight, man, it was just chugging along doing just fine. So, um, you know, the motor could have a little more brakes, maybe it could use a little more. Um, I read some things about uh, people having a hard time getting it to go into neutral. Maybe the shifting was a little notchy or just not quite right. That wasn't uh, my experience at all. I thought the shifting was, was just fine. Um, this bike had uh, um, a full synthetic oil in it, which he said really helped a lot. And so I guess he has experienced a little bit of issue with it not wanting to go into neutral. Um, I guess not really not wanting to go into neutral, but being a little bit harder to find. You know? uh, that wasn't my experience at all. It was one of the things that I definitely read about was that that could be an issue, but uh, it was fine. So I thought it shifted really well. Um, I felt like the uh, the fuel injection was good. Uh, maybe the idle was a little bit high, it seemed to me. Um, yeah, maybe I'm splitting hairs there. The rest of it seemed all right. Of course, I didn't ride it real far. I probably only rode the bike, honestly, about maybe, maybe two miles at the most. I rode it down the alleyway out in front of the house here, so I did get it on a little bit of gravel, turned onto uh, some pavement. Like I said, I didn't get it out of fourth gear. This isn't really much of a review that I'm trying to do here. I just want to give my basic first impression of what I thought of the bike myself. Um, like I said, I was really, I was really interested when I heard that this bike might be coming to America. I was interested to see, you know, what it would be like. And, you know, from what I saw, it was pretty impressive. Um, one of the things that I really, one thing I really love about the KLR is I love the relationship between the pegs and the seat. It's really open. I've got long legs, a really long inseam. And so for me, like I had a V-Strom 650 for a while and Comparing it to a KLR, man, I really felt like I was kind of scrunched up. It wasn't nearly as comfortable as a KLR. Asher. And so, I kind of thought that because that bike um, will fit a lot of shorter riders, and me being having a, a really tall inseam, I thought it might be a lot like the V-Strom. Um, man, the seat on that bike was really comfortable. Actually, it had a seat concept seat on it, so, but he said it's actually really similar, so. But a very nice, wide, flat area to sit. Much, much better than a KLR, but the relationship between the seat and uh, the pegs um, was open enough that I felt like, you know, I could ride it a long ways, and probably I would still be standing up, kind of stretching my legs as I rode, but I do that on a KLR anyway. Um, it wasn't much more scrunched than, than a KLR, honestly. And that was one of the things that I really thought I would have issue with. I guess this bike is a little bit smaller um, than an average motorcycle. And it was kind of interesting to finally get to see one in person. It really doesn't look that much smaller. And so, that part of it was interesting also, but anyway, to get back to the ergonomics, um, he had put uh, bar risers on it, so I did have a chance to stand up on the bike and see how it felt riding. KLR, I'm really hunched over. I always put taller bars on my KLRs, and I try to get the bars up, up some, you know, it makes it a lot better for standing and riding. And he'd done the same to this RX-3, he had bumped it up with, uh, it, it looked like it had, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half space or something like that. Um, still have the stock bars, um, by the way, the stock bars look really awesome for a Chinese motorcycle. I mean, bars are better than what a KLR comes with. Um, also other things, you know, like the, the LED blinkers and stuff, you know, not going to get that with a KLR, you know. Um, so anyway, back to the ergonomics once again, you know, things like the bars standing, Really comfortable, man. Better, you know, of course I didn't get to ride a, a truly stock bike. It had been modified, but the way he had it set up, man, I liked it. I liked it a lot. And uh, I would, I'd buy one, you know, particularly if I could find one at a really smoking a deal on, um, on Craigslist, um, for sure. I, you know, I would love to, I've always wanted to get a bike, um, 
uh, fresh from the crate and to put it together myself. That's one thing that uh, CSC is doing that I'm kind of bummed out about. I know initially you could get the bike and assemble it yourself. I've always wanted to open a crate and put together a motorcycle myself. And so I'm bummed out that you now have to pay to have them basically assemble it they, and then they, they ship it to you and you just have to do a couple of things to it and you can go and ride it. I would much rather have the bike just delivered in a crate and put it together myself. Truth is, I'm probably going to take it apart and want to grease, you know, all of the uh, all the suspension components and stuff. I'm going to want to go through all that. I'm going to want to put my own oil in it, you know. I'm going to go through it anyway, so why not just let me assemble it, right? So I kind of wish that that would be the deal. If I had an extra 3,800 bucks, you know, I would order one. Um, and, and ride it until, you know, I got bored with it or whatever and, and probably get rid of it. So, anyway, I just wanted to give kind of, uh, is I missing anything else? You know, the lighting, I guess, uh, I'm, I'm stoked on the LED turn signals. Hey, Asher, stop with the drill, please. I'm trying to make a video here. I was stoked with the, uh, the turn signals being like LED. I guess the front headlight isn't that great stock, but there's fixes for all the, you know, the little nuances. It looks like it probably has pretty good uh, wind protection also. Um, didn't really get, like I said, I didn't get to get out on a freeway. From what I saw in the couple of miles that I rode it, it, it seemed acceptable to me. Um, oh, you gotta go pee pee? Go ahead. Go ahead, you, you can go potty. I'll come in and help you if you need it. Anyway, so yeah, it seemed like the wind protection would be pretty good. Um, What's that? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Asher. Um, I didn't get to see the uh, the stock plastic luggage either. Was something that I was really interested in. Uh, from what I've seen, that stuff, you know, I, I build adventure motorcycle luggage for a living, so I was kind of interested in seeing that. I did see the upgraded stuff that looks like the Tour Tech knockoff. Yeah, it looks all right. I think it's like eight hundred bucks for the for three boxes and the frames. Seems like a pretty smoking deal for that bike, but when you're going to pay $800 for that upgrade and you look at what the bike itself costs, eh, I don't know, man. Um, are you really going to want to throw $800 at a $3,800 $3, bike? I'm not sure. Uh, so anyway, I didn't get to see the plastic stuff. Would have liked to have seen it. When I first heard the news that this bike was going to be coming out, I kind of thought, well, if it turns out to be super popular, which was my hope for the bike, you know, maybe I would do frames for it and, you know, make it so that people could put solo boxes on it. Um, I've yet to, honestly, I haven't gotten a single inquiry from anybody with that bike wanting my stuff for it yet. And, you know, I suspect that that's just because you could do the $800 upgrade and, you know, be good with that. Uh, for $3,800 to be able to, you know, throw some gear on that bike and go out and get on, you know, some nice back roads and tour or, you know, take it out. I would be perfectly comfortable riding that bike on um, forest service roads. Uh, I could see myself probably riding some some single track also, you know, uh, maybe ground clearance would be an issue or whatever. I certainly wouldn't want to push the bike real hard. You know, I watched basically every video I could when I first found out about these bikes, uh, and that would include the Everride stuff. You know, I, I, I felt at the time I hadn't, you know, I had seen the bike in person or ridden one for sure when I saw his review on, on the bike. And I just thought to myself, you know, this guy just doesn't get it. You know, he doesn't understand what this bike was designed to do. I feel like I get it. But the bike's designed so that, yeah, you can go off-road a little bit. You might want to, you know, pick your line carefully or whatever, but it will get it done. Um, it's just not really what it's designed to do, you know? It's not meant to rip up single track. But you could probably go pick a line and get it to, you know, your camp spot for the night or what have you. Um, it'd be just fine. Double track? Man, here in Washington State, we've got logging roads for days. The bike would be just fine for it. And, uh, so in terms of the suspension, I didn't really get to push the bike at all. But, you know, it's just really not what it was designed to do. You know, you're, you're not going to take that bike out and jump it. It's just, I suppose you could. Um, I don't know why you'd want to. Um, it's just not what it's meant to do. And so I felt like the Everide stuff, you know, I felt like it was... 
like the guy just didn't get it, you know? Um, I don't I don't know where he was coming from with his review, honestly. Everything else that I've read about this bike um, and all the videos I've seen, they've all been basically positive. Little nitpick stuff here and there. And yeah, I can see where you nitpick and, and do whatever, but at $3,800 for that bike delivered to your door, man, sign me up. I thought it was awesome. So let me think, is there anything else uh, with that bike? Uh, would you want to ride two up with it? Eh, probably not. You know, I could see putting Asher on the back of it um, and going out and riding it and it'd probably be okay. Two full-size adults. I know there are people that do it. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess maybe it'd come down to what you're used to, you know? Um, if your main thing is just, you know, getting from point A to point B with reasonable uh, comfort and you're not used to having, um, you know, 100 horsepower <laughs> right there at your wrist, yeah, it'd probably be just fine, you know? I guess it probably, a lot of it comes down to what do you expect for your bike to do. Um, so anyway, you know, uh, what else can I say about it? Um, I just think it's a lot of motorcycle for the money, honestly. And, you know, I think here comes China, you know? I hope we get more motorcycles like this. Honestly. And I, I hope that Japan maybe gets it too, that they understand that maybe a smaller displacement, six-speed transmission, fuel-injected, decent suspension. Give me that bike, man. That's what I want. I don't want a 1200 GS. It's just too damn big. So, anyway, Erica Solobox, I'm going to get back to uh, building some pannier frames today. And, uh, stay safe, everybody.